this is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 7, Sequencing Translations from Grade 8, Module 2. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students learn about the sequence of transformations, one move on the plane followed by another, and that sequence of translations enjoy the same properties as a single translation with respect to lengths of segments and degrees of angles. Students learn that a translation along a vector followed by another translation along a vector of the same length in the opposite direction can move all points of a plane back to its original position. Is it possible to translate a figure more than one time? That is, translating a figure along one vector, then taking that figure and translating it along another vector. In the picture below, point P and ellipse E in the black have undergone a sequence of transformations, first along the red vector, where the images are shown in red, and then along a blue vector, where the images are shown in blue. So let's take a look at how this works when you translate a sequence. So here we start with our original figure. We've got the ellipse and the point, and we're going to translate along vector AB. So I slide that along the vector, moving point A to point B. And that gives me the translated images, E prime and P prime. Then the next step is the sequence is the second translation. So taking that image, which was translated, and then we're going to translate it along vector BC by moving the sliding tape, the paper, along from point B to point C. And that results in the ellipse E double prime and P double prime. So the question was, is it possible to translate a figure more than one time? And the answer is yes, you can translate a figure more than one time. And that is called a sequence of transformations. Our essential question is, are the segment lengths and angle measures preserved in a sequence of translation? If so, why? So we've got our challenge here. We've got angle ABC, and we have segment ED, and we are going to translate those figures along vector FG, which is right here. So essentially, that is going to move these two figures to the right. Then we'll label the translated images appropriately, A prime, B prime, C prime, and E prime, D prime. After that, we'll translate the images, A prime, B prime, C prime, and segment E prime, D prime, along vector HI, which is here. So we'll be moving the figures down and a little to the right. And then label those translated images appropriately. Then answer questions C and D, as well as E on the next page. How does the size of angle ABC compare to the size of angle A prime, B prime, C prime? And question D, how does the length of segment ED compare to the length of segment E prime, D prime? And question E, why do you think you observed in parts B and D, D and E were true? So go ahead and pause the video and complete those translations and then resume the video when you are ready. In order to do our translation, the first thing that I'm going to do is extend the vectors. So vector FH, or rather FG, is right here. So I'm going to extend the vector. And I'm also going to extend the vector HI. Then I take my tracing paper and I place it over the figure. And sketch angle A, B, C, and segment ED. Then turn my paper over and darken the back side of the tracing paper. Return it to the original position. And then I also want to sketch the vector that I will be translating along. When you translate along a vector, you move the endpoint 
or the starting point, along to the end point. So then you slide it along the vector. So I'm going to slide this along and move point F to point G. Then trace the image that has been translated and label all of your points. You may need to darken your image. So the top here, this was A prime. Label your new point. A, or this was A, so this is A prime. The vertex was B. The image of the vertex is B prime. And this was C, and this is C prime. Your segment, this was E, this is E prime. And D was translated and is D prime. Next, translate along vector HI. So I'm going to take my tracing paper and I'm not translating the original, I'm translating the image. So they are in the same position in respect to each other and I also need to, tra I need to trace the vector and my tracing paper doesn't go over that far. So what I actually need to do is to use a new part of it. So I'm going to trace my vector that I'm going to translate along and I also need to trace the images that I am translating. Alright, now I'm going to slide this. It's, uh, I need to darken that on the other side. Darken my paper. and slide it along the vector. So I'm moving point H to point I, sliding along the vector, and then trace the image, and label it. So this is my new angle. This is a double prime. The vertex is B double prime. And this ray is C double prime. Then the image of ED. This was the first figure. This is the image. And then this is the second translated image. And the label is E double prime and D double prime. Question C. How does the size of angle ABC compare to the size of angle A prime, B prime, C prime? The angle measures are congruent. D. How does the length of segment ED compare to the length of segment E prime, D prime? The segment lengths are congruent. And question E. Why do you think you observed why do you think what you observed in parts D and E were true? Segment lengths and angle measures are preserved because the motions are rigid and unchanged. Example 2. Translate triangle ABC along vector FG. Then translate its image along vector JK. Be sure to label the images appropriately. You may pause the video and do this on your own if you would like to, and then we will go over the answer. Number three, translate figure the polygon A, B, C, D, E, F along vector G, H. Then translate its image along vector J, I. Label each image appropriately. So when we take this polygon and we translate it along segment G, H, Notice that it's going to be moving down two units. Then, when you take that image and translate it along vector j i, then it is going to go in this direction. Pause the video and complete the translation. The first part of the translation moves the figure down 
two units. I have labeled the new vertices A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, and F prime. Next, we'll, we'll translate the image, and we're going to move it along vector J, I. So you've already done that. If not, pause the video and do that. And then we take our image, and we translate it along J, I. And I take my image, and I move it along the vector. And it will end right there. When we move it along vector j i, we are actually moving it over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 2. So let's just double check that, taking point e. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. And point b. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. So we have translated it correctly along that sequence. For number four, we are going to translate circle A and ellipse E along vector AB, which is right here. Label the image appropriately. So first take your ruler and extend the vector so that when you slide it along, it stays in a line. Then take your tracing paper and trace the vector. So we've got our starting point and our ending point. And then we are going to translate circle A, so I will draw that figure. And then we are also going to translate ellipse E. Then take your tracing paper and turn it over and darken the other side. For both the circle and the ellipse. Return it to its original position and make sure it's lined up. Then you want to slide your tracing paper along the vector, moving your starting point A to your ending point B. Alright, so I've got my starting point that was on A, now it's on B. Then darken your figure and label it. This is the figure that we translated, and the translated figure is called A prime. Here is our figure that we translated, and the translated image is called E prime. Translate circle A prime and ellipse E prime along vector CD. Label each image appropriately. Moving my tracing paper so that I can trace the vector as well as the images. Right, so first I'm going to trace my vector. This is CD and I've got my starting point and my ending point. Then the image is what I am translating so I'm going to trace the image and trace the image of the ellipse. Then I need to remove my tracing paper and darken the other side of it. Return it to its original position. Make sure that it's lined up. So I've got my vector back in place and my images. Then I'm going to slide my starting point C to my ending point D. Darken your image and label it. This is the figure of translating the image. So this is a double prime. And this was the original figure. This is the translated image. And then when we translated that, this is now E double prime. Question C. Did the size or shape of either figure change after performing the sequence of translations? Explain. The size and the shape were preserved after the sequence of translations. 
This is a rigid motion and the size and the shape will not change when translated. Before we continue with exercise 5, I'd like to go over an example that is not in your book. Suppose we translate figure D along vector AB. How do we undo this move? That is, what translation of figure D along vector AB that would bring D prime back to its original position? So on our original move, we were moving from left to right. Our starting point was A, and we were moving to the right. If we want to go back to the original position, then this needs to become our starting point, and this will be our end point. So then we would have to rename that vector, and the vector that we would need to use would be a starting point of B and an end point of A. So to get back to the original position, the vector that we would use is vector B, A. Exercise 5. The picture below shows the translation of circle A along vector C, D. Name the vector that will map the image of circle A back to its original position. So we take our image and we move it along the vector and it ends up at A prime. Then we want to know what vector do we move it back along. We will need to move it back along that same vector except our starting point will not be C this time. Our starting point will be D and then our ending point will be C. So let's go ahead and write our vector to put it back to its original position. The original vector was CD and then the vector to move it back to the original position will be the vector DC. So that your ending point is now your starting point. Exercise 6. If a figure is translated along vector QR, what translation takes the figure back to its original location? In order to go back to the original location, you need to use the ending point as your starting point. So instead of QR, we will use RQ. Notice the direction of the arrow for the vector. It all, always will point to the right. Also up here, make sure that you have the arrow over the vector label DC. Lesson 7 Summary in this lesson, you have learned translating a figure along one vector with then translating its image along another vector is an example of a sequence of transformations. A sequence of translations enjoys the same properties as a single translation. Specifically, the figure's lengths and degrees of angles are preserved. If a figure undergoes two transformations, F and G, and is in the same place it was originally, then the figure has been mapped onto itself.